Welcome. <laughs> uh, we're going to be in our Bible in a few places today, and uh, obviously because we're at church, right? And um, today, like every other Sunday, we're going to worship Jesus, but we're going to experience Jesus through the heart and love of a good mom, okay? We're going to worship Jesus, but we're going to experience Jesus through the heart and love of a good mom. Now, I said good mom twice. I'm emphasizing good mom. Uh, I trust that every mom here is a good mom. Unfortunately, there's some bad ones out there. I was at the jail this week, heard stories of some moms that you just scratch your head about. And so I want to look through, look at Jesus and experience Jesus through the heart and love of a good mom. Okay? And let's look at Proverbs first. Let's just start there before we go any further. Proverbs 31. You guys probably know where I'm going. Psalms, Proverbs, right towards the middle of your Bible at the very end of Proverbs. Proverbs 31, verse 10, the Bible says this. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. And then if you fast forward, I still hear pages turn. I'm going to let you stop. I like hearing pages turn. Like, like, like I've said before, it reminds me of my studies through the week. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Now go toward the end of that chapter and look at verse 28. The Bible says her children arise up and call her what? Blessed. Her husband also. And he praiseth her. Husbands, we got a duty. We got a duty, guys. We need to be praising our good wives who are good mothers. Amen, guys? We need to be praising these ladies and be praising you guys. And so um, I just thank you guys. Late, I say guys, I thank you ladies. We're going to experience God through the heart and the love of a good mom. Thank you for those good moms out there who can help us, uh, all of us, men and women, to be able to experience God in a very unique way that Paul experienced God. And I'm going to be preaching about that a little bit this morning. But the Bible says that they, her children rise up and call her blessed. I think that was what our last year we gave uh, ladies, I think we gave you a t-shirt that said blessed on it. Yeah, and that's from this verse. Her husband also, he prays with her. And so, guys, just give you a little bit of challenge. Go ahead and kick you right now. If you ain't been praising your, maybe your mom or your wife, who's a good mom, you need to get on it. All right? Get after it. Because uh, good moms are... One of the greatest blessings this world has ever, ever known. Amen, guys? Amen. Brian's got it. Amen, guys? Amen. Yes. Yes, you are. And so, let me define a couple things real quick. Let me define just a mother. I feel like this is important. Literally, by definition, a mother is one who conceives... One who conceives. Mother. It's one who conceives, or it's one who conceives and bears, or it's one who conceives and brings forth a child. But you're a mom if you've only conceived and that's only the only thing you've ever done. If you've conceived and and the child passed away before you could ever bring it into the world, you're a mother. You might not have a little child to hold in your arms right at this moment. But if you've ever conceived, you're a mother. Follow me there? Uh, some of you guys are mothers, and your ch children are in heaven right now. But the definition is one who conceives. One who conceives and brings forth a child. One who conceives and bears, conceives and brings forth the baby. And so that's just the, the raw definition of a mother. And I just want just to emphasize this one time, or real quick, um, as far as that goes, because I feel like in a crowd this size, there are many of you guys who have had um, similar things to me and my wife where you lose a baby and you have one waiting on you in heaven. There is a, um, I heard this, I can't remember where I heard it from or what, but I just want to share with you, we do math a little bit differently than the way God sees math. Okay, we think 
that if a husband and a wife get together, notice I said husband and wife, because that's, that's, that's when babies are supposed to come after that happens, right? Husband and wife get together, that's one plus one. What's one plus one, guys? Two. And then, let's say a third one comes along. Not a third wife or anything like that. <laughs> husband, wife, another one's coming. That would be two plus one is what? Okay, so let's say you have uh, one on the way, okay? And let's say that that one uh, doesn't make it here. Naturally, uh, the way we do math is it would be three minus one again, and it would be two. But the way it really works is that one that passed away affects the mom and dad so much that it that it impacts the rest of their world. And a lot of times it impacts everybody around them. could be in a great way. And so, so when it's three minus one, it's not two in God's eyes. It can be a thousand because it can touch the lives of a thousand people. That one. And so I need to be always mindful that, um, of that. Amen? So let's, that's the definition of mother. Now let's, let me talk about a good mom, but let me say this too. I said all that to say this. We're going to be giving gifts, Mother's Day gifts out to all you mothers at the end. And I define that because I want, even if, even if you've never had a, a child be born into this world, but you've conceived one in your womb, I want you to take a Mother's Day gift this morning, okay? Because you're a mother. A good mom. I didn't have time to do this for all of you guys, ladies. But I just polled some people. I polled some people about a mother's love. And uh, like I said, I didn't have time, so don't take offense if I didn't poll you. But I polled some mothers, some good mothers that were close to me. I've got a lot of ladies in my family. So I asked my mom, my sisters, you know, my mother-in-law. I asked a lot of ladies and to, to define a mother's love, a good mother's love, in one word. So what one word would you define my mother's love? Matter of fact, I saw somebody out in the street and I just, I just randomly flagged her down and I just asked her this random question and it embarrassed the snot out of her. I kind of felt bad, but I really didn't. But her face got all blood red and she's just like, who is this weirdo that's asking me this question? I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but what would you think of that in your mind? Shout it out. Powerful. Moms, tell me, moms. Sacrificial. Unconditional. Unconditional. What'd you say? Caring. Caring. Protective. Protective. Patient. Come on, moms. Selfless. Selfless. Tired. Tired. <laughs> Tired. Yes. We will, we, will, we will end there and take a nap now for all you mothers. You guys get to go. We have a room set up in the back where you can take a little nap and the dads will stand here watching. No. <laughs> I, uh, I ask a lot of them. Uh, over and above, unconditional was the word that, that got thrown out more than anything else. I also heard, I'm going to just repeat some of these, wholehearted, selfless, indescribable, Endless, enduring, unwavering, fierce, joyous, pure, intrinsic, sacrificial, protective, cheerleader, whoop, nurturing and gentle, you know, and you could think of others. But I would say these are words that define a good mom. And we could think of so many others. I'm thankful for moms. Aren't you guys thankful for moms that you've seen these kinds of things portrayed in? It might be your mom. You might have, your mom might have been the most selfless uh, mom who loved you with an undying love, a sacrificial love, an unwavering kind of love. Maybe they were tired. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about that actually this morning. But praise God for moms. Amen? Good moms. I, uh, I wanted to emphasize something in 1 Thessalonians. Go here with me. 1 Thessalonians. I praise God. God has blessed me with a great mom, uh, a godly mom who raised me up in church, trained me the way that I should go. 
I praise God for my wife, who I think is the best mom in the whole world. And I praise God for her mom, who made her that way. And uh, she's the best mom in the world. And so um, I, I am so, I've been touched by good moms. Like, I've been uh, uh, changed by them. My life has been surrounded by good moms. It's only until later in life that I even knew what a bad mom was, honestly. And that's how, that's how blessed I am. I'm just so thankful that I didn't even know what a bad mom was until I was an adult and I saw it really for myself and really opened my eyes to it. But praise God for you ladies who love this kind of way, selflessly and unconditionally and unwavering and endlessly and all these things. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Get there myself. I want to talk about how the love of a mom changed the world. It wasn't just the love of one mom. It was how Paul saw how mothers love their children. And so here you have this, this guy Paul, and he's trying to figure out how in the world can we change the world, and he's among his friends. And I can imagine a conversation around a campfire on several occasions where they were contemplating how in the world that they could impact the world the way Jesus wanted them to impact the world. And I can, I can just see now Paul or some of the other guys bringing up, if we're going to impact the world the way that the Lord wants us to, it needs to have something to do with the way moms love their children. I know this, I know this happened. Because Paul writes about this. Paul writes about how they were going to take, how, how they've, how they've uh, learned how moms love their kids, and they're going to take that kind of love, and they're going to love the world that way, and they're going to change the world the way moms love their babies. And you guys might not have ever really picked up on this in Scripture. I think I've referenced it once or twice. But, but I, I thank God at such a profound level for the way that good moms are with their kids because it changed men's lives like Paul, Timothy, Barnabas, all these guys who are going out on mission trips, planting churches all over the place. They were replicating a mother's love for her children as they were preaching to these people. And I'll show you what I mean. In 1 Thessalonians, the Bible says, let's look at, I'm going to back up just to get a little context 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul says, for, our, for yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you that it was not in vain, but even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Let me, let me pause here. They had already been to Philippi. It was rough there. They're coming to Thessalonica. This is why it's the letter to the Thessalonians. He said, so they're entering in. He's writing to them, uh, or he's referencing when they did enter in. Verse 3 says, For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. And he continues to explain to them how, they, how these guys came to them at Thessalonica. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. And so let me, this is where everything kind of changes in the text. I just want to give you just a little bit of context. Our main passage comes next. But this is when he was just talking about how they entered in. You know, we didn't come with this kind of attitude. We didn't kind of come with this mentality. We didn't try to come to deceive you guys. We didn't come just to have like flattering words and like beguile you, trick you. And then he begins to elaborate how they, how they planned and intentionally came into the city. And it was like a mom and her baby. Verse 7 says, but we were gentle among you. See that? We were gentle among you even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. 
For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Let me pause here. These three verses here, the whole context is about a mom and her children, about a nurse and her children. That nurse is specifically referencing a mother who's nursing her children. Okay? So you think about that for a second. And I think, of, I think of how Paul, like I was talking about, would have been having conversations. And we know that Paul taught, like, uh, if you're in Christ, you're a new what? Okay, I'm a new creature. So he's like, okay, we're going to have all these new creatures that are, that are coming about in all the cities around us because they're accepting Christ. What is the best way that we could raise up a new creature? Ding, 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 ding. How about the way that moms raise up their new creatures? Because nobody raises up a new creature like a mama raises up a new creature. There's, there just isn't. Dads can't raise up babies like moms can. <laughs> My wife tells me all the time we get in fusses about who loves our kids more. And man, we'll, we'll, we'll go at each other like, ah, oh, there's no way you love them. No, there's no way. I love them more. No, there's no way. But you know, at the end of the day, and I don't even like to admit this, but I just don't know how I could love them as much as she loves them. It's different. I know it's different. It's different kind of love, but like, I know at the end of the day, she's going to pinch me out of that one. I just know she is, because I've been through the arguments, you know. But, and that's, that's the reason why Paul calls this out here. We need to address these new creatures, these new babes in Christ. We need to raise them up like a mom would her little baby. And so that's how they entered into the city. And so, because of that, yeah, I can't even emphasize this enough, th- what Paul saw a good mom do, and, and, and good moms all around them do, changed the way that they changed the world and flipped the world upside down for the gospel. It's awesome. And he, and he starts off, we were gentle among you. I just want to break this down just a little bit. We were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. How are we going to impact this world? Well, moms are gentle with their babies. They're gentle. They have the tenderest concern for every little thing. We need to have that for all the people here. We need to have some tender concern. We need to be gentle among them. They weren't just like walking into the city, just kicking doors open. Let me tell you about Jesus. No, they weren't doing all the... They came in gently. Like a mom with her children. Did it work? Did their gentle approach work? Are you sitting in church this morning? Some of you are like, I don't know. Yeah, you are. (laughs) I'm telling you, you are. It worked. You know what other you know what else moms do? They they condescend to the lowest estates and do the most humble things for their little tiny babies. I remember changing my first diaper in the hospital. You know the first diaper. You know what I'm talking about? And my wife warned me, babe, these first couple are going to be rough. (laughs) <laughs> she was right. <laughs> I don't even know what the, that big M word is, but it's nasty. You know what I'm talking about. I don't even, don't even say it. <laughs> but I thought I was the man because, you know, I did the first one. But you know who did almost all of them? Mama. It was Mama. The things that mothers do, good moms do, anything, whatever it takes to take care of this precious little one. Paul said, you know what, guys, if we're going to change the world, we need to come in gently and condescend to men of low estate. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like something Paul said in another passage of Scripture? Yeah. Yeah. Where did he get something like that? I bet one of the places he got it, in addition to Jesus, was his view of good moms, as he was referencing here. 
whatever it takes, we're going to have to have that meek and lowly mindset and heart to change some poopy diapers with some of these new Christians that we're going to be impacting. They do these things. We were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. Some of the best pictures that I see these days in, in people's lives is when moms embrace their babies for the first time. Saw some this week. Mom has a new baby, and just that, you know, that, those first couple pictures that, that you get to see with them holding their babies, man, you talk about the warmest embrace that there is out there, it's that one. Moms who cherish their babies. And so here's Paul and the guys. How are we going to change the world? We need to cherish these people, just like these moms do that we talked about yesterday. Do you see how they embrace their little babies? There's that warm hug. We need to have that kind of mindset with everybody that we come in contact with in Thessalonica, guys. We have to. Because it works for them. We were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. You know, there's a reason that Paul and Peter and the guys, they talked about the Word of God as the sincere, what? Milk. Here's, they, they need this milk, and he calls it the sincere milk, the Word. Where would he get that from? As a nurse, a nurse, a mother with a brand new baby, as she's nursing and feeding her children, he's like, we need to give them this sincere Word just like that. The next verse says, So... Being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but our own souls, because you were dear unto us. How does this translate? Mothers, I know, good mothers, have the attitude when they look at their child, you're more important than me. You're more valuable than I am. I see this. And moms put off their own care themselves to make sure that their little ones are taken care of. You're number one. You're more important than me. That's scriptural. Let each esteem others better than themselves. And we get that perfect example from a good mother's love. It's like you come first before me. And I like what Paul says here. He says, we, we, when we were affectionately desirous to, to come to you, uh, to see you, and, and, and we're willing to not just give you the gospel, that's something that they needed. But he said, in addition to the gospel, we were going to give you our own souls. We will give you our own souls. The same, the same context is continuing here. Mothers would lay down their, good mothers would lay down their lives for their babies, wouldn't they? Wouldn't you, moms? You would, you would in a heartbeat, it's, it wouldn't even be a thought. If it was you or your babies it, that would have to get, leave this world, you would leave. I know it. Not even a question. Not even a second thought. Leave my kids, take me. And he says, this is, so this is a heart that Paul has in the guys that were changing the world and they're viewing moms, good moms, and they're saying, you know what? We want to give you the gospel of God, but you know what else we would do? We would give you our whole souls. We would give you our lives. You're more important than us. We would die for you. We would, we would, we would give you our own lives too. That's what a good mom would do. Why? Why would they do that? The last segment of this verse. Because you were what? You're dear unto us. Because of the love. They had the love. They had the love. And I like how good moms, this is awesome. Let me back up. You know, there's all these people here who like to be, debate when life takes place. Is it after the heartbeat or whatever, blah, blah. 
we all know it's at conception. Amen. And you want to know the cool thing about how God proved that that's when life begins? is because a mother's love begins there. A mother's love starts before they go get the ultrasound to hear the heartbeat. And you know it. And so God intrinsically gave mothers this love that begins. Who cares when the, world, the rest of the world says life begins? Moms know when life begins. Because that love just springs up in them at the very beginning. And as I was pulling you, Mom, as I hear and I take that, it never ends, huh? It's endless. It just keeps growing and growing. Guys, and I see Paul. And I can just imagine him and the guys, like, with their pens and papers out. I don't know. That's, just play with me. And, uh, okay, well, she's a good mom. She's, she's a good mom, yeah. This person's never stopped loving their kids. I guess we got to love these new Christians forever and all this stuff. I'm thankful that these guys had that example. I'm so thankful they had that example. He said, So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. He loved them. And then over in verse 17, like you see an example of this, But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. So he even referenced when he was taken away from them for a short time, like in presence they weren't there, but in their hearts they were still there. And then he says, we endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Why was that? Because they had that love. Look at verse 9. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Can I tell you, what they were doing here was exactly what they were seeing a nursing mom do. Day and night, relentless, labor, weariness, like we were talking about. This is what they were, this is all under the context of we're going to come in this city and love and treat these people like a good mom does her children. And this is the same. The, the context is still continuing. You remember, night and day we were laboring. They had great examples all around them by good moms, night and day, laboring for their little children that they love so much. And I'm, I'm just here to tell you that good moms not only changed the world and flip, helped these guys flip it upside down back then, but it's still happening now. One of the words that I got from, from somebody in town about a good mother's love was that it's contagious. I'm like, oh, I hadn't heard that one yet. Contagious? What do you mean by that? And they said, a good mother's love uh, rubs off on other people. They didn't have any idea what I was preaching about. But it's, the, the, their example was, when I see a mother's love, and I'm like, man, I'm like failing there, and I want to have a little bit of that in my life. And they see this over here, and it's like it rubs off on people, a good mother's love. And it rubbed off on these guys, a good mother's love. You've heard it said before, and I believe it's true, because it's, it's a, like a possi- possible statement. It says... Um, the greatest accomplishment that you might have is not who you become or what you become, but who you raise. You've heard that before. You know, a lot of times that's the truth. You, sometimes we don't even know, and you don't even know, mamas, like who you're raising. God knows. God knows. But His greatest calling on your life and His greatest mission for you in your life could very well be to raise your baby exactly how He wants you to raise him or her. Because He knows what He or she could do in the future for His kingdom. And I think of obviously Mary, (laughs) Jesus' mother. Mary. She might have felt like she was, you know, a nobody or whatever at times. But... But she was raising the Savior of the world. 
And it's, it's, it's interesting, people like to put Mary up on this like almost deity kind of pedestal. Mary wasn't a god. Guys, let's get real. Mary wasn't a god. Jesus died for his own mom, okay? And, but what I, what, what I see in scriptures that, that Mary said, and it sticks out to me the most, is the very last thing that Mary ever said. You guys know what that was? Not the last thing Jesus said to Mary on the cross, but what was the last thing that Mary ever said that we see recorded? John 2, 5. You don't have to look there. He'll pull it up on the screen. John 2, 5. His mother saith unto the servants, this is Mary talking, whatsoever he, which is Jesus, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. The last thing Mary ever said in the Bible. Do whatever Jesus says. Could you imagine like the mental struggle that would have taken place in Mary? Think about this. Think about you moms who have kids that are a little bit older now. Who they're getting out on their own. And you're like wondering why they're making the decisions that they make. You know what I'm talking about? Why would they choose that? Or it might be, why would they choose him? Or why would they choose her? You know, all these things. Why would they choose that pathway or whatever? Could you imagine the mental struggle that the devil had to have been working on in Mary's head and her heart about the pathway that Jesus chose to take, which was going to be at, to Calvary? But Jesus was able to give her the peace through all this to have this kind of mindset. Whatever Jesus says you do. And I'm sure Mary, at times, even though she was like, why do you have to go die for people that you don't know? At the same time, because she was a mother, she was like, I still love you anyway. I love you no matter what. If you go and die for somebody that I don't like, I still love you. And some of of these apostles were able to see and know Jesus' own mother. And the good moms in that day helped shape how the world was going to be changed and flip upside down. You know, the only person, moms, talking to you, most likely, I I can't say for sure, but most likely the only person that loves your kids more than you is Jesus Christ. But isn't it cool to know that Jesus Christ, and the reason I said that is, you know, not because Jesus might not. Jesus always does. Isn't it cool to know that Jesus Christ loves your kids more than you do? That's awesome, ain't it? When you're weeping over your children, when you are praying over your children, all these things, all the while there's a Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves them more than you love them. We have issues with trust, though, don't we? And it's so cool that a love of a mother reflects the love of Jesus Christ, though unconditional you know Jesus loves you unconditionally he loves you if you didn't I'm telling you I'm preaching to you Jesus loves you unconditionally this morning amen praise God for you moms who love your kids unconditionally but moms can't die on the cross for their kids Jesus Christ did though And he died on this cross and he shed his blood to pay for your sins, my sins, your mama's sins, your your husband's sins, your wife's sins, everybody here. He shed his blood on the cross for all of our sins. So that if and then he rose from the dead. And the Bible says if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that he did that, we can be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You might be here this morning, you not might have no idea that if you died today that you would go to heaven. I'm telling you this morning, you can know that. There is a message called the gospel message that was preached by the apostles and the power that they preached it and the, the influence that they were able to use to help them be able to preach that came from a mother's love. So they came in gently, cherishing. Let me come in gently right now and say this, gently with love because you're dear unto me. If you die without Christ... There's no hope for you in heaven. But Jesus commended his love for us and that while we're yet sinners, he died for us. He showed us how much he loved us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And if you would accept Christ this morning as your savior, you can become a child of God.
you can become a child of God this morning and know that you're going to go to heaven when you die. And so I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. Let's bow our heads and let's pray.